Welcome to Electron Line. Starting with the same lens system, the same compound lens system that we had in the previous video, we are now going to find the refracting matrices. In the previous video, we found the transfer matrices. There were six transfer matrices because there were four lenses and two air gaps. And here we know that we have to find seven refracting matrices because there's a total of seven boundaries. The general equation of finding the refracting matrix is fairly straightforward. Notice it's a two by two matrix. We have ones across the diagonal, a zero in this element, and on that element we have minus D of that particular boundary. The A represents the number of the boundary. And the D represents the power of that boundary, which is defined by this equation. It is the difference of the index of refractions across the boundary. This would be the ones on the transfer side. This is the index of refraction on the incident side of the boundary, divided by the radius of curvature of the boundary. Remember, we have the seven radii of curvatures of these seven boundaries. And so what we need to do in each case, we need to find the power of each boundary. Then we plug that in to find the matrix, the refractive matrix for each boundary. All right, let's start finding all seven of the powers. Starting with the first one, D1, that is equal to the index of refraction across the boundary. So that's the boundary right here. This is the transmitted side, this is the incident side. So the index of refraction would be 1.61 minus 1 for air on the outside, divided by the radius, which is 1.6 centimeters. All right, and let's see what that gives us. So we have 0.61 divided by 1.6, and we get, we'll do it to two decimal places, 0 0.38. The power of the second one is equal to, uh, let's see here, that's across the boundary. So it would be 1 minus the next fraction of the first lens, so 1 minus 1.61 divided by, and the radius of curvature is minus 2.8. So we get 0.61 divided by 2.8, and the power there would be 0 0.2, hmm, I'll keep three significant figures just in case, 218, it'll be a little bit more accurate, let's do that one. So we have 0.61 divided by 1.6, we have 0 0.381, we'll just keep three significant figures, just keep it a little bit more accurate, we have less rounding error if we do that. All right, D3. So that's across this boundary. That would be the index of refraction here, 1.6, minus 1, divided by the radius of curvature, R3, a minus 3.5. So yes, all right, so we get 0.6 divided by 3.5, that's a negative. So we have minus 0. 171. It's minus here, so we have a negative power for that boundary. All right, next, D4. So now we cross this boundary, it'll be air minus index of refraction of that one, 1 minus 1 1.6 divided by 1.6. So we get 0 0.6 divided by 1.6, and again, that will be negative, negative 0 0.375. And I think you can see the pattern here of how that works. Next, we go to D5. And that's across this boundary. So it'll be the index of refraction of this lens minus air, 1.51 minus 1, divided by hmm, the radius of curvature, in this case, is infinite, which makes it zero power. Okay, moving on to D6. That would be this index of refraction minus this index of refraction, so that's 1.59 minus 1.51 divided by radius of curvature, a positive 1.9. So that would be 0 0.08 divided by 1.9 equals, that would be 0 0.042. And one more, D7. So that would be air minus this index of refraction, 1 minus 1.59 divided by, that would be radius of curvature, a minus 2.4. So that would be 
0.59, that's a minus, divided by 2.4, that's also a minus, so we end up with a positive 0.246. So now we have the powers of each of the seven surfaces. We are now ready to come up with each of the seven matrices. Let's start with R1. Notice that three of the elements are really easy to get. They're always 1, 1 across the diagonal and 0 in the bottom left corner. And then in the top right corner is the negative of the power. So in this case, that would be a negative 0.381. R2. And you begin to see the pattern. Actually, when you work through one of these examples, you get really proficient at just plugging in the numbers. So that would be the negative of that number minus 0.218. So here again, 110. And the negative of that number, that would be positive 0.171. The negative, one's across the diagonal, zero there. And we end up with a negative of that number, that's a positive 0 0.375. Okay, next, R5. That's across this boundary right here. Notice that there's no curvature there. So what do we end up with? 1, 1, 0. And R5 would be D5. That would be 0. And then we have R6. 1, 1, 0. And the negative of this number, which is a negative 0 0.042. And finally, the, the seventh refracting matrix. Again, 1, 1, 0 and the negative of that number, which would be a negative 0 0.246. And that's how you do that. It's very systematic. Just go ahead and make sure you get the right equations, work through it carefully, and now you have, in the previous video, the six transfer matrices, and in this video, the seven refracting matrices. You're now able to come up with the single system matrix that represents the multiplication of all these matrices, starting from the right, working all the way down to the left. Now, obviously, if you put this in a quick computer program, you can crank to this quite quickly. If you do it by hand, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of time to work through each of these matrices, each of these matrix multiplications. But it can be done. In the next video, we'll show you how that is done indeed.